Hello everybody and welcome to another Noseman video tutorial about Cinema 4D because always remember Noseman knows. So today's subject is going to be smoke but here's the catch we are going to be using Cinema 4D without any plugins. This could be a very complex or tedious process depending on how you approach it. What I'm going to try and do in this first video of uh, what will hopefully be a series is to give you some uh, ideas and workflows uh, that allow you to do to begin with some sort of static smoke like uh, clouds uh, with uh, a minimal amount of animation and uh, even uh, pan with the camera around and uh, the clouds will seem quite realistic. Now I want to and I'm already in the process of uh, finding techniques where I can create more complex things like uh, a fire with smoke. Now by no means this is going to give you solutions for every single case and nothing beats an actual um, plugin that does this um, like uh, X particles for uh, explosion effects like uh, turbulence FD like uh, I don't know what other plugins you may find or combinations of plugins and third-party renderers but at least you can get started and uh, cover some of these cases without needing to purchase a plugin so without further ado let's dive into Cinema 4D and see what we can do in this new fresh scene we're going to start with a plane and I'm going to set this to one segment because uh, we don't need the geometry actually now the basis of our smoke is going to be some sort of material so I'm going to double click here and double click on this let's call this smoke excellent and I'm going to leave the color to the default white get rid of the reflectance for now and I'm going to go to the alpha channel and add a gradient. Click on the gradient and we're going to change it to a circular gradient. Now let me drop this on this. Let me turn on transparency to get a much smoother view and uh, I need to reverse this so invert the knots here. Now what you will see is, if I render especially, is that the gradient exceeds the boundaries of our UV tile which is basically the square here. And what I found is that if you get the rightmost knot and set it to 50%, then basically you're within your range. Now there's one little thing I turn on to create a more turbulent effect, and that is turbulence. Let's set this to 25. And now if I render this, not make a cube actually, just three buttons to the left. When I render this, I get this flat polygon that has this kind of nice, interesting, uh, smoky pattern. Now I want to add some animation to this because if I scrub here and I'm going to turn on my interactive render region uh, you will see that uh, it doesn't change it's identical from frame to frame. So go to the frequency and do something like 0.5 and uh, next go to the editor of the material and just animate preview. So if I press play you will see some sort of previewing going on and uh, the particular gradient is quite accurate. So we have this uh, fluctuating wave because uh, actually I mean cloud this uh, cloud that change shapes and uh, this is what smoke and clouds normally do okay so this is the the main component we're going to construct it with but we need to create a situation where this is more volumetric because if I go to the side now you don't really see any kind of volume and um, just as a, a starter, you can use many of these with different uh, materials and different seed values. If you go to the gradient and you change the seed, uh, you will get different uh, random um, turbulencies. Is it turbulencies? Yeah, I don't think it's turbulies. Uh, that would be funny. Anyway, one more thing I'd like to do since we're here is just pull the white out so we can choke it a bit so the, the turbulence doesn't reach too deep because uh, in theory the cloud has some sort of substance inside. Excellent. So let's put this under a cloner object and uh, you can see now that we're creating this stack. Now this doesn't look very good and it's got quite a few repetitions. Let's set this to 10 
let's make the distance 10. So now again, we have this stacked little thing here. So we need to randomize it. We need to do all sorts of uh, different things. And for that, with the cloner selected, I'm going to use a step effect. Now, in the parameters, I'm going to turn off the scale for now and go to the rotation. And I can turn this quite a bit. And you'll see that this creates some sort of randomness. Now, again, we don't get the sense of volume here. So let's add some lights and see how that changes the whole situation. We'll add a light. And we're going to put it there to the side and set the shadows to soft. So now, look at this. We're getting this nice sense of depth. What I like to do is set my light to have some sort of fall off. So you can see here that it burns part of the cloud. So although we're at the beginning, we're starting to get an interesting effect. You can always reduce uh, the intensity of the cloud. Okay, so this is number one. The next thing I'm going to do is add one more light and bring it all the way to the other side. And the other light, what I'm going to do with the other light, let me bring it further in so it affects. There we go. Well, interesting, it doesn't seem to affect it currently. And that is because we're viewing it from the opposite angle. Uh, there's no light falling. If I pull it up, you will see it does affect it. But when it's down, it won't. I need to be able to catch some light on the opposite sa side. But because these are facing the light from the back side, that doesn't happen. For this to work, I need to go back to my material and add a very small shader in the luminance channel. If I turn on luminance, this is going to become totally white. And I'm going to go to my effects and add a backlight. And already you can see it's catching some light from the back. In the backlight, um, uh, you can try these. I think the um, ORNIR works uh, a bit better. You can play around with these things. You can clip it so it doesn't um, become overbright when the light is close to your cloud. So if you clip it, um, you get some sort of uh, compensation for the overbrightness. You can see this makes it totally white and clipped. This keeps it in check. So this is the first thing. Now, we ha do have a problem that if we view this from the side, it's by no means volumetric. You can see all the slices. And I need to go and fix this. So let me remove my Material Manager. I'm going to select my cloner and go to MoGraph and select the target. Effect. You can see all these weird things are happening. I want to target the camera. So look at camera. It's, they're always going to look at the camera. And let's go to my four views and see what just happened here. If I select this and create a camera, we'll be able to see where the camera is. So what's happening is that the Z axes of the planes are facing the camera. So I need to go to this and change the orientation to plus Z so they are facing my camera at all times. There you go. So you can see that they are rotating as the camera is rotating around. This is going to allow us to have uh, a constant view of the planes from the camera view. But still, this doesn't look very good. So we need to go and fix certain things. So number one, I need to go to my step and change the rotation from H because now that we've changed the orientation of the plane, it's a different axis to make them rotate around. I need to set this over here. Let me put 750. And, ooh, it's not rotating. And the reason is, let me put it back there, that in the cloner, we need to make sure that first we target and then we rotate. And now you can see that we're getting this blob of clouds. Now we do have these lines that happen sometimes and uh, a way to fix these is to go to your backlight and change the type to let's say internal. Nope. Simple. Nope. I'm going to keep it or NIR um, and play around and find out exactly where this is stemming from. I have a suspicion that it may be the shadows. So let me turn this off. And let me go to my light and turn off the lights and see why these are happening. 
It is the shadows indeed. So let's go and select both lights. Go to the shadow and uh, let's see if we can play around with these and see what happens. So first of all, I can increase the resolution of my shadow, which is not very visible now. So let's bring it back to 250 by 250. I can uh, turn off the bias, hmm, kind of fixing something, but not good enough. Let's set this to 5. Ah, and it's increased. Set this to 1. And still we have these. So we need to figure out what the problem is. And it's part of the whole process to be able to figure out these things. What I'm seeing here is some sort of intersection between these uh, planes. Maybe if I go to the cloner and I space them out, I can remedy this partially. Now you can see another problem I'm having is, again, because I changed the orientation to use the target, then maybe this is not the axes I need to move them in. And this is it. So I need to go and make it the Z. And now, because we don't have any intersections anymore, those lines don't exist. So we went through the process of trying to find something, just turn things on and off to see what the problem may be. And again, uh, I've done this a hundred times and I could have come to this conclusion to begin with, but I'm trying to show you the thought process, which is very important when you do your own setups in order for you to be able to troubleshoot. So I think the light is a bit too bright. So let's go and select this light, pull it out a bit, and you can see when it goes closer, they get much brighter. Take this light, put it right at the back. I'm going to increase the intensity and add a bit of color to this, make it slightly bluish. And you can see it's grabbing a bit of the blue tint and making it a bit more interesting. So this is the main idea behind creating a cloud plume or something. And you can see that we can rotate from all sorts of angles and get an interesting cloud. And this method is good uh, if you want to do uh, relatively static clouds. And uh, let me show you a few more things you can do. Just have some fun. You can go to the step effector and uh, maybe you can change the scaling uh, so that you create more of a, a pointy shape and so forth. And you can even use other methods of uh, creating your planes. Uh, for example, uh, use your uh, object mode and fill an object with these planes and then orient them and so forth. But the idea, which I hope you get, is that we can create um, interesting looking clouds that can survive a, a fair amount of uh, camera animation and a bit of rotation and so forth and give a uh, pretty decent results. Now, a very important thing uh, I forgot to mention is the ray depth thing. So go to your render settings, go to the options and make the ray depth something like 60 and the shadow depth something like 60. And in this case, it doesn't change anything. But if you have more uh, slices, if you want to, the, the count of your, your planes to be higher, then it will help. The other thing is try and make the lights not intersect with uh, what you're doing. Just give them some distance and uh, play around with your lighting to make things a bit more uh, interesting. And at the end of the day, uh, nothing is stopping you from doing all sorts of uh, other things like adding a bit more noise to your clouds. So that depends, of course, where you want to add it. You can add some in the color or the diffusion to darken them a bit. Let's go and add a noise here and you'll see we can add some sort of um, pattern. Let's go and select, uh, for example, this and make it much bigger, so 800%. So you can see now we're creating more turbulent clouds. And again, just play around with your noises and uh, you will see that you will get uh, very decent uh, results for uh, a particular number of cases. And uh, I think uh, at this point, uh, this uh, first introduction to creating clouds, and I think I changed my scale. Let's make it 800 again. Good, and click outside somewhere. And as a first installment, now you get some sort of idea on how to create uh, simple clouds just by using 
uh, simple noises and uh, MoGraph and a few other things. And uh, I'm going to save a few of these uh, example scenes for you, including this one, and I'm going to make them available uh, to download. Now, I'm going to expand on this technique and add some particles and all sorts of other things. And again, feel free to experiment with these things, and uh, I'll get back to you with uh, another tutorial when I've found a, a technique that allows you to do a few more things uh, so to make it more powerful and more interesting. Please comment below, uh, ask any questions, and uh, post if you make anything interesting. Uh, and until then, uh, it was a pleasure. Talk to you soon, and don't forget, nose man knows. Oh, by the way, by the way, uh, don't forget to subscribe to 3D Fluff. Uh, Matthew O'Neill, MASH, is making a, a great series of tutorials that cover a wide range of subjects, and uh, he is uh, the man to follow. Uh, also, uh, check out my very good buddies, uh, the BroGraph guys. Uh, they do these amazing tutorials and uh, podcasts with all sorts of interesting artists. And there's a whole bunch of tutorials from uh, NAB 2018, which I just came back from. Anyway, uh, I hope you like this tutorial. Uh, speak to you soon. Toodaloo.